What's up everyone, I'm Nick. In this video, we're gonna talk about enits and enums. And it's probably gonna be one of the harder videos in this course, not because it's hard, but because a lot of what's happening is kind of behind the scenes and it's not super visible. But first we're gonna talk about enits and init stands for initializer. And it's basically just a function that runs to set up your view. So we can customize these init functions with our own custom variables. So for example, if we wanted to use the same view a bunch of times in our app, and each time we wanted to maybe change the background color, well, we could add a custom color into our init. So that every time we call this view, we could just change the color and have the same view with a different color. So one time we would use red, one time we would use blue, and the init is gonna take care of all that logic for us for changing the color. So I think it sounds a lot harder than it actually is. So I'm gonna to try to simplify it down for you guys. And in SwiftUI, we don't always need to use custom initializers, but sometimes we do, especially as we start developing more complex and advanced apps. And in knowing how to customize your init can really help you out in the long run. And after that, we're gonna briefly talk about enums. This stands for enumerations, and it's basically an easy way in our code to categorize certain things. So for example, if we had an app where maybe it was a map app and we had to always reference a direction like north, south, east, or west, well, a beginner coder would just start typing in strings for north, south, east, west. But a more advanced developer would use an enum and create four cases on this enum for north, south, east, and west. So then every time in your code, instead of having to type in north, you actually just reference this enum. And this ends up helping your app in the long run because it helps you avoid typos and it also helps make your app a lot more streamlined and more efficient. And we are back in the Xcode project one more time. Let's create a new file for this video. Right click the navigator, create a new file. It's going to be a Swift UI view. And we're talking about initializers and enums. So I'm gonna call this initializer bootcamp. Let's go ahead and click create. Once it's created, let's click resume on the canvas to make sure we're connected and let's get coding. All right, so let's start with creating a little view here. Let's uh, add a V stack. In the V stack, let's add a number on the top by using a text. We're gonna do number five. And below it, let's add another text with a title that will say maybe apples. This will be how many apples there are in on this screen. Let's give this a frame with a width of 150, a height of 150, and we'll keep the alignment center. So let's just delete the alignment. Let's give this a background of color.red because these are apples. And let's add a corner radius to make it look a little better of maybe 10. Let's update our fonts real quick. So this apples, let's make uh, dot font dot maybe headline dot foreground color white. And let's make the, the five a little bigger. We'll do font dot large title. And again, foreground color white. And let's give it an underline. Let's also space these out a little bit. So let's add some spacing to the V stack. Uh, maybe of uh, 12 and that looks pretty good and now we're gonna get into the initializers so so far in this course whenever we add a variable whether it's a number like 150 or the color red or the text apples we've typed it directly into our code like we're doing here but we can actually create variables outside of the body that store this data, this information. So let's do that quickly. So let's start with the color, background color of red. I'm gonna, before the body, so outside of this body here, uh, let's create a variable. We'll call let uh, background color of type color. And we do this of type color because we need to let the system know what type of variable this is. Is this a number? Is this a color? Is this a, uh, something else. So this is going to be a color. And we're going to set it equal to color dot red dot red. So now instead of typing in 
color.red down here in our code, we're just going to reference this variable. So it's called background color. So I'm just going to copy that and we're going to paste it in here. So background is going to be background color. So when I click resume on the canvas, you can see it's still red. And if I change this background color, let's do blue. We can see that the, the canvas will update accordingly. So this is pretty useful. And anytime you're building screens, uh, if you're going to use this same variable a bunch of times in the view, so if this was background red and we had something else that needed a background red, it's better to put the variable up here because it's very easy to change it and adapt it instead of going through your code. But for right now, let's just change it back to red. And I want to take this a couple steps further. So right now we're initializing this view with a background color of red. But what if we wanted to reuse this view a bunch of times in our app and we wanted to change the color each time. So this time we wanted red, but another time we want to use orange or blue. Well, what we could do is not give a default value here. And now when we go to initialize this view, so the initializers bootcamp view, which is what is on our screen, if every time we go to initialize it, it's going to ask us for a background color. So down here, we're getting this error on the preview because we're trying to initialize this initializers bootcamp and it's looking for us to tell it what background color we want. So if I click fix on this, on this error here, you can see that our initializers bootcamp now has a parameter of background color and it's asking us for a color. So if I add in here purple, and I resume the canvas, you'll see that it's now changing. And in our code throughout our app, every time we initialize this view here, this screen, and this screen could be a button or a menu or something like that. Every time we want to change the color, all we need to do is change this one little variable and the rest of the code will stay the same. So right now we're doing purple, but we could change this to any color we want. We could do orange and the preview will update and that's awesome. And we can create these variables outside of our view for any item that we have in our body. So if we wanted to change the number here, the, the text or the width, we can change all of that. So let's start doing some of that. Let's extract these variables from the view. So first we're going to do this number and we're going to call let uh, count of type int, which is an integer, which is basically a whole number. And we'll set it equal to five. And in Swift, if we want to reference a variable like this and put it into a string, all we need to do is use a forward slash, open and close parentheses, and within the parentheses, we will reference the variable. So we'll call count here. So if I click resume on the canvas, it should still connect. And if I change this count to 25 and click resume on the canvas, our number will change to 25. And again, I can not give it an initial value. And then every time we go to initialize this bootcamp, it's going to ask us for an initial value. So here I can put 50, 55. Click resume on the canvas and you'll see that it updates to 55. So every time we have an initializer, it's asking us for a color and a count. Let's also do the title here. So let's say let title of type string equals apples. And now instead of having this whole string here, we can just put title. If I click resume, it should all build. And then if I change this apples to oranges, click resume, you'll see now we have 55 oranges. And one more time, if we get rid of the default value, every time we go to initialize this view, it's going to ask us for a title. And down here, I can put uh, whatever we want. I can put peaches, click resume on the canvas. And now we have 55 peaches. And again, this is orange with 55 and peaches because in this initializer, it's, we're giving it a orange 55 peaches. And I want to dive into what this is actually doing. So in Swift UI, it creates an initializer for us. And that's what this bit of code here is. That's why it knows to ask us for a background color and a count. But really what's happening 
is it's creating a function that's called init. And if we type in init and we hit enter, it's going to ask us for parameters and statements. And init is basically an initial function that runs as soon as this view is created to update all to update the view and create the view. So right now our init really looks like this background color of type color count of type int and title of type string. That's just these three things here and it's going to set self dot background color. So it's going to set this is this variable equal to the variable that's passed into this function. So equal to background color self dot count equal to count and self dot title equal to title. So again, this count is the one in our in our view. And this count is the one that's passed in to this function. And this function is what you're seeing down here. So when we call initializer bootcamp, this is really is our init statement. And by default, the init statement really looks like this. But Swift UI is very smart and it created this for us. So we didn't really need to add this bit of code, but this is doing exactly what we had before without the code. And the reason I'm showing you this is because we can also customize our inits if we want to. So what does that mean? So right now it's asking us for a background color, a count and a title. And let's pretend in this view here, we wanted to reuse this view for apples and oranges. And every time we had an apple, we wanted to use the color red. And every time we had an orange, we want to use the color orange. Well, well, what we could do, we could do this long way like we have right now. So if we want to do apples, we would make the background color red and we would change the title to apple, apples, click resume on the canvas. And now we have our red apples. If we wanted to go back to oranges, we could change this to orange and type in oranges. But what you notice is that the background color and the title are related, right? Every time we have the title as oranges, the background color needs to be orange. So typing some data in twice might lead to an issue in our code. So to avoid that, we can create a custom init. And in here, Instead of passing in a background color, I'm going to delete this from our init. So now the init only asks us for a count and a title. And we're going to simply say if the title is equal to apples, open the brackets. If title is equal to apples, we'll put self dot background color equals dot red else. So if the title is not apples, we will do self dot background color equal to orange. And we can delete this background color here. And now when we initialize, all it's going to do is ask us for a count and a title. And if the title is apples, we know it's going to go red. Otherwise, it's going to go orange. So in our initializer bootcamp here, we're now going to get this error because we changed the init. And so I'm just going to delete the whole init here, type in bootcamp, open the parentheses, and you'll see that the init now only has a count and a title. And that's this line of code again is matching this line of code here. So let's give it a count of five and let's type in apples. When I click resume on the canvas, you'll see that it is automatically red, but we didn't have to tell the initializer to make it red. It just knew that the because the title is apples, because the title is apples, the background color is red. And if I change the title to oranges, the background color is immediately orange, which is perfect. So I'm going to do a video in the future where we go into detail on these if else and conditional statements. So if this little bit of code was a little confusing for you, do not worry, we're going to cover this in detail because these are super, super powerful and super important when we start writing logic in our apps. Uh, but before we end this video, I want to introduce you guys to enums. So in Swift, if we ever have a situation where there is where we have something with a couple different options. So, for example, 
we had fruits and we wanted to switch between apples and oranges. Well, instead of typing in apples directly, we could use a custom enum. So let's make one quickly here. So outside of this init, I'm going to add enum and I'm going to call it fruit and open the brackets. And now we have to tell it all the fruit possibilities that we have. So for our app right now, we're just going to do case uh, apple and case orange. So if we use this enum of type fruit instead of a string, we can now tell it, let's use apple, let's use orange. Instead of asking for a title here and typing it in directly, let's ask for a fruit. And this will be of type fruit. And we're going to delete this if statement. We're also going to delete this title here. And we're going to say if fruit, we'll use this lowercase one that we used here, is equal to, and we'll put a period. And now you'll see that there are two options for our fruit variable. We This fruit will either always be an apple or an orange. And if it's an apple, open the brackets. So if it's an apple, we'll do self dot title equals apple apples and self dot background color equals dot red and we'll do else so if it's not apple it must be orange so we'll do self dot title equals oranges and self dot background color equals dot orange so now when we go to initialize this view, I'm going to delete this one more time, open the parentheses, and you'll see that the initializer just asks us for a count and a fruit. So we'll do 100. And when we press the period on this fruit, we only have the option of typing of an apple or an orange. And you'll notice here now, we don't have to actually type out apple. We don't have to type out orange. We don't have to use the color red or the color orange. We'll just use dot apple and this initializer will take care of the rest. So I will press resume on the canvas and you'll see that it's, that it's now 100 apples. And just to show you guys real quick, let's put this view in our preview into an H stack. So let's type H stack, open the brackets, I'm going to cut this initializer's bootcamp and put it into the H stack. And to the right of this, I'm going to add one more initializer bootcamp. Open the parentheses. And this time, let's give it a count of uh, 46 and a fruit of orange. And now we can see in our screen how we have, using the same body code here, we have two totally different views. We have different numbers, different colors, different titles. And all we gave it was a number and an enum, which is a type of fruit. So again, I'm going to get a lot more into detail in a future video on these if else statements. We're also going to learn how to use enums even more efficiently than this. But I just wanted to give this first intro video to you guys to explain to you how initializers do work. Because a lot of in a lot of our views going forward, we're going to put our data outside of the body because it's a lot more efficient. Instead of typing in Apple directly into the body, we're going to start adding our data in variables outside the body. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little longer. I know it was a little harder and a little more confusing, but we are getting into some of the good stuff here. So I hope you're following along. I hope you're understanding. And as always, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.